Crafty Crafty, please do hit that subscribe button below and make sure that you also click on the little bell to turn your notifications on. It will let you know every time I upload a new tutorial. It's completely free to subscribe and it's well worth doing. So today we're going to be using Iron On Light. This is for light materials and you can take an image or a picture and you can then iron it on to an item such as a bag. You can see I've done a watercolour flower wreath here and then I've added in some foil HTV. So we're in design space, you can see that I've already got my text. Now this is Rustrana font which is from Font Bundles and it's a free font as well. You can see that I've added all the glyphs in and I've already welded it. So the next thing we need to do is upload the image. If you don't know how to get the glyphs up, you don't know how to download fonts, I will add the links to those tutorials in the description below. So we're going to go to upload, we're going to go to upload image, we're going to browse for the image we want, I'm going to select it as a complex image and I'm going to go to continue. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to remove the background and then I'm just going to zoom out and I'm just going to remove the inner and you can see it's got a sort of border going around the flowers which is what I want for today so I'm then going to go to continue and I'm going to save it as a print and cut we can then click on the image and insert it into our canvas you can see that it is now on our canvas. Now you do have to remember with print and cut that the maximum you can use is 9.25 inches by 6.75 inches. So I'm just going to change the width to 6.5 just to make sure that there's a little bit of leeway there as well. And then the next thing I want to do is just size up my image with my text and just make sure that I'm happy with the size of both. So you can see that our image is already set as a print and cut and our writing is set as a cut because I'm actually going to do my writing in HTV foil. So we're then ready to go to make it. So you can see it's come up as a print and cut. Now we are using printable iron on light today. It is always worth checking the instructions because it may vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. But with this one, we are going to mirror it. And with most printable iron on lights, it does need mirroring. So we're going to mirror. And then with this one, as I say, we're going to use a foil HTV. So we need to mirror that as well. We're then going to go to continue. So with our print and cut, we need to send to printer. Now you do need to, again, make sure with your printable iron on light that you've got the correct one for your printer. You can get laser printable iron on light, but unless you've got a color laser printer, you really want to be working with inkjet. So I'm going to use my inkjet printer today. Now because we haven't flattened, we are just cutting it exactly as the image is. So you have a choice. You can see the bleed is on or the bleed is off. When the bleed is on, you almost have a kind of blurry outer. And this is as a buffer. It acts as a buffer. Now it will be cut out. It's completely your choice. I choose to actually have the bleed off. But as I say, you can have the bleed on or off. It's completely up to yourself. For the printable iron-on light, I am going to use the printable iron-on light cut setting. And for my foil HTV, I will use the foil iron-on setting. We're using the printable iron-on light. This one is from GM Crafts. I will link to it in the description below. I use this brand, I use the Avery brand, and I also use the Cricut Principle Iron On Light as well. All three of these I absolutely love, and I will link to all of them in the description. You'll see we've got a gridded side, 
and it's got a plain side. You want to make sure that your inkjet prints on the plain side. So you can see it's printed out. We've got our registration marks. Now it does say that you need to leave it to dry for 10 minutes. However, I have found that sometimes with print and cut, and I don't know if it's my ink or what it is, but if I leave it to dry too long, it really struggles when it comes to scanning to picking up the registration marks. So I've gone and put it on a blue mat. It's literally just come out of the printer. And I'm going to use my fabric brayer, but you can use a non-stick roller. And I'm just going to gently roller it along the image and I'm just going to make sure that I don't touch the registration marks because I don't want to obviously smudge those but I do want to make sure that my iron-on light is adhered to the mat. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a roller. I don't advise using a scraper because you don't want to scrape the ink but a non-stick roller or your fabric brayer should be fine. So we can then go ahead and cut and you can see that that has cut all the way through that do you know what that's absolutely fine I'm then just going to come in and remove the middle now if it hasn't cut all the way through which again is fine it may or may not do you can see that when it comes to weeding it just pulls away it's super super easy to weed I'm then just going to get my scraper and just very gently start lifting it from the mat I'm then going to go and cut out my HTV so I've got my bag here and I'm using my easy press today. I've set my temperature to 170 degrees Celsius for 20 seconds. But initially I'm just going to come in and just place it down. I'm just going to hold it there for about 5 to 10 seconds and this is just going to remove any moisture that's in my fabric. So I've got my printable iron on light and I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to place it where I want it on my bag. As always, I've got my easy press mat and I've already got a pressing pillow inside of the bag. I'm going to place a Teflon sheet over and as I say, we're at 170 degrees Celsius for 20 seconds. So we're just going to place that down and press our button and it's just going to count down for us. You don't need to exert a huge amount of pressure, you just want to hold it in place. We can then remove the Teflon sheet. So I'm just going to get my weeding tool and just lift a little bit up. And then I'm gently just going to start peeling. And if it rips, that's okay. You can then go in with your weeding tool and just pick up another area and again we're just going to very gently start peeling back. And this is a, so this is the GM Crafts Iron On Light, printable iron on light and this is a hot peel. As always you do want to read the instructions on your printable materials because they may be slightly different. I can never do this in one go. I'm sure there is a trick to it and it doesn't matter whether I'm using Cricut or Avery or GM Crafts. I just cannot do it in, in one peel and I don't know why that is. It's obviously something to do with me. So that's the first part done. Now, printable iron-on light, it's really sticky. So my advice, we are going to have to go in for a second time, and you want to go in for a second time to make sure it's fully adhered anyway. But obviously we want to adhere our foil onto here. Always, always wait until this has completely cooled down before you put a Teflon sheet over it and reheat it otherwise the Teflon sheet can stick to it. So you do want to leave it to cool itself down. 
this has now cooled down. You can see I've got my foil HTV and I've changed my easy press to 150 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. So I'm going to place my Teflon sheet over and we can then press that. So as I was saying before, when you place your Teflon sheet over, it tends to peel. So what you want to do is, and again, it has stuck, and it will happen with a lot of printable iron-ons. It's not specific to the brand. It happens with all of them. So you do want to leave it to cool down before you take your Teflon sheet off. Now when you remove it, it will feel like it's still stuck, but if you gently just peel it away and you look underneath as you're peeling, it will be fine. But you want to make sure it's completely cooled down.